That's right. And that special guest is Lance Fritz, uh, the current and outgoing CEO, president and chairman of Union Pacific. Lance, it's great to speak with you today. Uh, you did report earnings this morning as well. I, I want to get into that. But first, what's really moving the stock higher is the succession news. We knew that you're going to be retiring this year. Uh, that news came earlier in the year after a, a key stakeholder in the company, Sorbin Capital Partners, uh, became activist. I guess just walk me through um, Jim Venna specifically and how this came to be, given the fact that even though he's a well-known entity on Wall Street uh, and in the rail industry, analysts certainly seem to be very surprised uh, by this news. Well, Jim is an absolutely perfect pick for us at this time, uh, Morgan. And thank you, by the way, for hosting me this morning. You know, we, we, I started the conversation with our board about a year and a half ago on being ready for my ability to retire at the back half of this year or the front half of next year. And then to your point, at the beginning of this year, we made a, a stronger point on that. It would happen this year. And the board went through an exhaustive and thorough search. And in the end, they identified the individual I think is perfect for running us at this time. Jim Venna, he's got a great track record in operations in the railroad, and he has a history with us. He's, he was our chief operating officer in 2019 and 2020 and a, an advisor to me in 2021. So we're looking forward to welcoming him back onto the railroad and uh, working on all the things we're working on right now. So what does that include uh, in terms of that leadership transition? And I ask that knowing that Venna is a Hunter Harrison protege, which is part of the reason I think the stock is reacting the way it is, uh, given what that means for potential for operating ratio, potential for margin improvement, service improvement and the like. Yeah, so Morgan, we're already well down the path on our own PSR journey, our precision scheduled railroad journey. Mm -hmm. We've realized much of the benefit of that in terms of uh, the service product improving for our customers, being more efficient and uh, reliable in providing that service product. Jim's goal right now as he joins the railroad is first to be the safest railroad in America, uh, in the industry. Second is to provide consistent and reliable service to our customers so that third, they uh, help us grow. Growth is one of the key uh, factors as we look in creating long-term value into the future, and Jim is laser-focused on that. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the quarter specifically. Uh, missed estimates, volumes are down 2%, revenue per car uh, was down as well, but headcount was up. I guess walk me through the dynamics that you're seeing right now and how much that is a reflection uh, on the broader economy and, and activity you're seeing in real time. Yeah, Morgan, it was a noisy quarter. First, on the top line, we outperformed our peers, but we were down 2% on volume. And uh, we also had a lot less fuel surcharge revenue, and that generated 5% down on revenue. On the, on the cost side, when it comes to labor and compensation, we signed a deal with our Smart TD union, that's the conductors on the transportation craft, uh, regarding break persons. And that cost us just under $70 million in the quarter. Now, it gets a two-year payback, but the upfront cost is this quarter, and now we implement it. We're about 60% implemented, so that payback is looking quite good. Uh, there were two other things that we did in the quarter. One is we reached the last agreement on paid sick leave with all of our craft, and that's a real cost. It's a wonderful benefit for our employees. They get the opportunity to when they're sick look, or, or their family members are sick, take time off, be paid, and take care of themselves. Uh, what we have to do is recoup that in cost. That just adds to, inf or in price, that just adds to inflation.